Hi everyone. So now we're going to be going through another velocity compound and impulse turbine. All right, so it says here, a velocity compounded impulse turbine, gas turbine, consists of two rows of moving blades separated by a row of fixed blades. And then they say the nozzle, the nozzle velocity is 750 meters per second. All right, then they give us the angle of the nozzle, which is 20 degrees. And then they give us the average speed of the moving blades. Now this average speed of the moving blades, they give us at 170 meters per second. And that is your U, all right? So that is your, that's the velocity of the moving blades. Normally we have to calculate that. Normally they'll give us the diameter and the revolutions per minute. And you have to use U equals um, pi D N over 60. But in this case, it's very nice because they give it to us straight away like that. So we don't have to calculate it. Uh, then they say the inlet, and this is important, the inlet and outlet angles of the first row of moving blades are equal. So that means, if we go to our sheet over here, that this angle here, theta, is the same as um, phi for the, for the first row of moving blades. So whatever, if we find that angle, then we know that angle there. So that makes it easy. And then it says the exit angle of the fixed blades is 17 degrees. All right, so remember uh, this, um, the, the nozzle, shoots that steam in here to the first row of moving blades and it goes out of that moving blade and then it goes into a row of fixed blades right and that fixed blade we can think of it as becoming the nozzle for the second row of moving blades all right so if the angle the exit angle of the fixed blades is 17 then it means that the steam or the gas i should say is coming in at 17 degrees um, to the next row of moving blades. So think of it as the same as this nozzle angle here. So the first angle that comes in from the nozzle to the first row is 20. And because this is the, e the exit angle of the fixed blades is 17. So think of it as like saying the nozzle angle of the second row of moving blades is 17. So we can think of it like that. Then they also say the inlet and the outlet angles of the second row of moving blades is equal. So that's also, again, um, theta equals phi. Um, and then it says the loss um, of velocity is 5% over all blades due to friction. And they give us M here, the mass flow rate, which we'll use at the end of the problem. And then they give us the scale. They give us the scale as one millimeter equals five meters per second. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend time constructing this whole thing. I just wanna show you quickly how I went about constructing this. So the, the order of things that I went. And remember, you can go from the second row to the first row, or from the first row to the second row. In this case, it's quite easy because we're going from the first row to the second row. So what I did in the beginning was, is I first constructed the um, the average speed of the moving blades, okay? So they gave us that as, over here, as 170 meters per second. And I just divided that by the scale of five meters per second. So it was 170 divided by five, and I got 34 millimeters, okay? So over here, I measured off 34 millimeters over here. And remember, for the second row, it's the same. So I go straight down and 34 as well. So that's done. All right. Then they told us what the nozzle angle is, which is alpha. All right. So they told us that's 20. And they even told us what the speed is of, of um, at the nozzle. They said it's 750. So again, I took that 750 meters per second and I divided it by five meters per second because of the scale. And then I got a measurement of 150 millimeters. So there's the angle, the nozzle angle 20. There's the 150 millimeters there. And then I drew that line, all right? And then I stopped there. And now, because we know the, the average velocity of the blade, all right, we know that that um, how many meters per second that is. We know the 
the speed at which um, the, the gas is coming out of the nozzle. So then we know what the relative velocity is. So the speed of the gas relative to the moving blade. And all we have to do is we have to join up this point to that point, And then we get that. So now we have the relative velocity. And I got that to be approximately 119 millimeters. Okay. And then how do I move from this side now to this side? Okay. So <clears throat> obviously as that gas moves over the blade, it loses some of the velocity. Okay. And according to what they told us, it's 5%. Okay. So it means that the relative velocity one is 5% more than when it leaves the blade. Okay. So what we do is to get the relative velocity two, we just say relative velocity two equals um, 0 0.95, because remember it's 5% less, so this is 95% of the speed, times um, relative velocity one, and then we get 113. Okay, so we got that now. But now, do we know the angle? So we, now we know the length of this line, but do we know the angle? And the answer is yes, because they told us that theta equals uh, phi. So once we constructed this um, vector over here, all we had to do was measure this angle, and it's also 25 over here too. Okay, I couldn't fit it in there, but it's 25 as well. Now we know the angle and we know the length. And then it's very easy after that to get um, V2. We can just join up these two points here. We can draw the line. We can measure it at 83 millimeters and then we have V2. Okay, and then from that, it moves over, which you can't see here, the fixed um, the fixed blades, and then it loses some more of the velocity. All right, so how do we get, and remember it's coming in, it leaves the fixed blades at 17, so that's what it's coming in at, at the second row, 17 degrees. And how do we get the, the velocity? All we do is we say um, to get 2v1, which is this one here. So this is 2v1. All we say is, again, we, we take 5% off it. So we say 95, 0 0.95 times the 83 from here. And we get um, 78,85. Okay, so you can just probably round that off to like 79. And there's the line there. You can construct it. All right, and then again, we can construct 2VR1. Very easy. We just join that and measure it off. And then the same thing. To get to 2VR2, we have to take 5% off this. So we say 2VR2 is 0 0.95 times the 47, and we get 44,65. Okay, um, I just rounded that off to 45 millimeters, and I drew that in there. All right, and once I got that, again, how did I know the angle? Again, they said to us, even for the second row, um, theta one equals phi one. So that angle equals that angle, so I could draw it in. And then the last one, two V two, I could just join that point to that point. All right, then all you need to do is you can get your, um, your velocity of wool for the top and the bottom and um, the velocity of flow on the sides here. And if they ask for those calculations, that you can give it to them. All right, so that's how I constructed it. I hope that helps. Um, and it was a quick video just to work through the construction of it, but um, hope that helps.